Hello there, 585ers. We are going to try to finish up tonight with our module three, um, looking at the Google Classroom. We need to cover the following things. Uh, we need to talk about Google Sites. We need to talk about uh, YouTube. And then what I'd like to do is to go over the assignment again, because I wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page and you're not freaking out over how much you have to create here. So I was going to try to do not a great bit of detail, but just enough so you can see it. The first thing, though, that I want to stress is when you're creating for this assignment, I do want you to have a central content focus. Um, it doesn't have to be putting in a uh, standard from the curriculum here in the state of Kentucky or Tennessee, depending upon where you are. But if you can just give me an idea that this is fourth grade fractions or fifth grade earth science so that I have an I have a understanding of then of what I'm looking at. But before we launch into that, let's go do the easy stuff first. And to do the easy stuff, I'm going to jump in to our girlfriend, the YouTube. YouTube is one of those areas of the Googleverse that we all use and very few of us really understand. It can be quite the quite a resource for the for the school teacher. If you want to create your own channel, it's actually a fairly easy process. And when you do that, you basically are going to use your Gmail account. Your Gmail account is your key to everything in the Googleverse. And you go in and you create the channel. Let me give you a sense of, here's mine. So this, what we're looking at right now, that was the consumer side of my YouTube. In other words, the stuff that I watched that I either am subscribed to or that I have watched over a period of many years that trend to me. The Google has really kind of made it more difficult to really monitor and change the settings in your channel, uh, which I find, frankly, a little disappointing. And the reason for that is really simple. It's monetization. I mean, they, they want to be able to um, make money off of your watching it. Now, at one point, you were able to go into your settings and you could turn off your history in YouTube. And you could basically then go in and say, if I'm going to show you right now, you could go in and you could say, I want you to turn off, I want you to clear all my watch history. Bam. Here's the second trick. Pause my watch history. Now what you've done is you've essentially have told um, Google, quit looking over my shoulder at what I'm looking for. Because that's how they come up with those recommendations they give you at the end of videos. Now, if you click on search history, you see, I have, well, first of all, I've cleared my search history, and then I've turned off my search history. So again, I'm not leaving any breadcrumbs behind me in the Googleverse for them to find me. You can go down through here and look at comments. You know, you can see what people have said about things that you watch. Uh, I do nothing with that. And as you can see, there's very little that I have done in terms of live chats. Show you again. Right here. History. Okay. Now. If you're going to create a YouTube channel, will you please 
do me one favor. I'm going to assume that you're going to want to use this YouTube channel inside of your Google Classroom to protect yourself. And most school districts have a Google administrator now or someone who can control the content that comes through the Google, through YouTube. But to use an old phrase of belts and suspenders, I'm going to click on this. And as you can see, down here where it says restricted mode off, if you turn that on, it is now basically going to filter any content that has been identified as mature content. Now, the other thing that it does is if someone gets flagged, in other words, if someone watches a video that's out there and they don't like it, then it will stop that video being seen on your channel. Now, that's the key. So if you're finding stuff off of your channel and you're putting it on your channel, and then you're using that to be the um, closet, the filing cabinet where you keep your stuff that you want to use. Then when a kid lands on it, then they can't go places that they shouldn't. If you look at my channel here, of course, it's made up of all the videos that I have taken and have made um, with you guys. And it goes on and on and on and on. The thing that most people, they never see that side. They only see this side of the world. Um, as you can see, I'm going to have a Q&A uh, live video coming up on May the, or March the 6th. That's a very interesting thing to get into as well. Although I think the Google Hangouts, frankly, is much easier and much more user-friendly than this. So we'll see. We'll see. I may not I may not use it. How do you make a playlist, Steve? Well, what you do to make a playlist, by the way, I'm telling you this because this is on the Google Teacher Certification Test. That's why I'm showing you all this. Is you come to a video that you have found that you like. You come down here to where it says Save, and you click on that. So these are the playlists that I have created that uh, that I could now save this to. I could create a new playlist. And put in the name of my classroom, whatever I called it. And this is what's interesting. Only the people with the link can view the, the videos that you have. Now, you could lock it all the way down, but you wouldn't want to do that because that's only the people, only you could see it. But if you make it unlisted and you create it, the only way that someone can see the videos from your playlist is you provide them with the link. Now, here's the only problem with YouTube right now. Let me show you. So I'm going to go to YouTube where we normally would land. And I'm going to, there's a theme starting right now. I'm going to look at something. I'm going to do a, a search for something for planets. Okay. So I'm going to click on planets here. And as you can see, I get lots and lots of stuff. Now, if I come down here to Solar System 101, National Geographic, you'll notice that the save button is sitting there. Save. And I can now send that to my Google Classroom. Just that simple. In fact, it says it down there at the bottom. Add it to my classroom. Now, here's the, the only thing about this. Let me go back to that again. And one of the things that, you know, is kind of fun is the planet song. So if you go in here and you look for planet songs, have fun teaching, and you click on it, and I try to save it, 
This action is turned off for content made for kids. So you can't add it to your playlist. Isn't that crazy? Now, it doesn't mean you can't use it. I mean, I can still go up here and I can, you know, grab the Earl. Either here or down here. You know, either place. I can go and grab that. And I can put it in my Google Classroom or into my drive, wherever I want to put it. The whole point, though, of the playlist is it helps you in organization. And when I did this today, and I was just doing it really fast, it was really hard to find anything that would let me add this to a playlist. But look, the share button works just fine. Look at all the different ways I could share this thing. But it won't let me save it to my playlist. Kind of dumb. So review. If you want to create a YouTube channel, let me go over here and log myself out. I may regret doing this. What I can do is when I go to YouTube, let's see what happens if I now go to YouTube so I can show you what it looks like. Okay. So see, it's up here and it's waiting for me to sign in. And if I click on that, I can create a new account for YouTube. And when I do that, it built, basically builds me a channel and then I can go in and do all the things that I'm used to doing as you can see here I've had a few channels made over the years and bang here I am and on your channel you have the ability to go in here and so you can customize your channel and you can add your picture up here. You can add a background. You, you can do all those things that you want, you know, to make it so it looks like yours. You can have sections. So if you wanted to organize your videos, but you can't save videos identified as kids into a playlist. Isn't that weird? Now, if I go over here to history, again, I just want to make sure you see this. This is where I can go in and I can turn off. I can clear it. You want to clear first. And then I can turn off. Right now it says, it's waiting for me to turn it on because it is off. I can turn off the, the watch history. Okay. What I've just done uh, is shown you the things that are on the Google teacher certification test that is related to using YouTube. Now, let me jump back. Here. And one of the things that we have to play with today is using Google sites. What is a Google site? Well, pretty obvious what a Google site is. It is a way for you to have a website that can be connected to your class. Why would I do that, you may ask? Well, a couple of reasons. One of the things that the classroom, the Google Classroom does not do, is it doesn't allow you to embed embeddable code. What does that mean? I'm going to show you in just a minute. So one of the things that embeddable code allows us to do is we can go to we can go to websites and if they have interactive games or they have interactive content, and we'll get into this much, much deeper when we look at the um, module number five, where we look at content that we can create for our our uh, ubiquitous classroom. And we'll be looking at things like Buncee, Nearpond, FET, all these different wonderful sites that will create content, Edpuzzle, 
all these wonderful sites that allow you to create content that you then can put into your Google Classroom very easily, very easily. But it's all done with links. So you can't have anything just sitting there that the kids can actually get to. With Google Sites, you can create pages that might have just one location that's an embeddable piece of code that they then can get to and use. I'll be honest with you, sites are becoming less and less important to the Google Classroom because more and more of the content creators out there, the Nearpods, the Bunsies, the so on and so on, the Ed Puzzles, they actually have built into them the hooks that'll let you put their stuff into the Google Classroom. But the Google Sites, again, is a part of the Google Teacher Certification Test. So I'm going to give you just a sense of what it is and how it works, and then we'll go through everything you need to know to do the assignment. So I'm going to start from my Google Drive. Remember, you really want to get into the habit of starting everything you do from your Google Drive. And you'll notice that right now, I'm in my Google Classroom from that drive. I mean, it links to that drive. I'm in my Google Classroom that is connected to this. Now, you know, mine says Google Classroom. It could also say Mr. Swan's fifth grade or Mr. Swan's period three high school. You know, it could, uh, Mr. Swan's period three algebra. Whatever you name it, that's what you'll see right here. If I go over here to our plus and I come down to more, I will come down here to Google Sites. Boom. And it says the created item will have the same sharing permissions as the selected folder. That's fine. It shares with my stuff. And it then goes through a little whirly whirl. And here I am. Now it doesn't have a uh, title to it. So let's give it a title. And we're going to call it uh, Planets. And there it is. See, it automatically grabs everything. If I want to add a logo, I can go find the logo by uploading it. Or I can go out and find an, a, um, I can, can go out and find it and then put it in. So since I really don't have one, I guess I could go and do that. You want me to do that? Let's do that. Let's make it look cool, okay? So I'm going to do a planets, Google search, images. I'm going to look for one that's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, because that's what we're doing here. If you know anything too fancy, uh, this one looks pretty good. And I'm going to do, and it's from Wikipedia, so I know it's it's got Creative Commons licensing structure. In other words, it's not copyrighted. I'm safe. So I'm going to basically um, save this image as, as you can see, it goes into my downloads, and I'm going to go planets. Okay. And it's a JPEG, so I know it'll work. I'll come back here. I'm now going to upload that picture that I took, and let's see what it does. And you got a little picture of it right up here. Okay. Here's my title page. This acts and looks, to my mind anyway, like slides or PowerPoint. I can select an image if I've got any, which I look like I have plenty of them from the Google. I could do a search. And so now if I do a search for planets, I can put in a picture here that will become the sort of heading of what I'm trying to do here. So let's see. Let's go back up here. I could find that one that I already grabbed once. Yeah, let's grab it again. And again, I'll make sure. And now looking pretty good right now. Wasn't that easy? 
The beauty of sites is how easy it is to work with. It is probably one of the simplest tools that's in the Google universe. Now over here, let's go through what we've got. Over here is where I can on, this is the home page, by the way, and I can add things to the home page by just double clicking right down here. Okay. And it'll tell you what, it, what they are. So right here, I've got a place to um, put a text box in. And on the home page, I can say, let's explore the planets. And if I want to mess with that, I can do it right up here. So if I want to make it to have a really big title, I can do that. I can change the fact that it's in the middle. I can make it a link to something. I don't need to. Uh, and of course, I can get rid of it. <laughs> now, if I come over here, I can add a text box underneath it by clicking at the insert. Or I can do that trick I just showed you. And I'm going to say, here are some fun resources. I tell you what, I'm going to make it for little kids, not big kids. So let's get rid of all that language. And we'll just say, here are songs about planets. Bang. Now, I can go below that, do a double click again. And now, I can go out and I can either find images, I can upload, I can do embed, and we'll do that in just a minute, or I can do from my drive. I, though really think it'd be a lot more fun if I go here. Now, from here, what can I do? Well, you already know what I can do. I can put in Planet Song. <laughs> and, you know, I maybe have watched a few of these, so I know the ones that I like, and I can, you know, do that from right here. So I find the one that I like. Uh, the planets of our solar system featuring the Hoover Jam. I don't know. Oh, Pink Fong. Do you all know Pink Fong, Baby Shark? I'm going to put that one in. And boom. Now I have my video in here. So I have, it's just that simple. I can go here. I can move it around to where I want it to be, so I want it more organized. I can change the size of it by clicking on it and dragging it out. Careful of that, you might lose, you know, some clarity. Do the same thing over here. Can you put them side by side? You can, but of course you have to get them to where they'll fit side by side. You can't just okay, let me get a, grab a hold of a corner here. There you go. So you can get them to fit side by side. Now, I tell you what's nice about this is on most um, setups where you're using uh, developing a, a web page or a wiki page, you have to use tables to create this kind of effect. So kudos to our friends at the Google for making this simple to do. So where we are right now is this is the home page. Okay. So this is where you would land when you have created your web page and you give people where it is. Uh, other things to show you, you can put in our friends. 
So let's just do this. Let's go ahead. We're going to move off of, pay, off of the home page, and now we're going to create a new page. You see, here's the home page. I'm going to click down here, and it says, what is your new page going to be called? I'm going to say resources for planets unit. Okay? And I'm going to say done. And bam. Notice that my heading here remains the same. It's going to be consistent all the way through this. Notice that now up here in the upper right, I have a new way of jumping around back and forth in my... Okay. Simple, simple. If I want to insert something from the drive, let's see what we have in our drive that we might be able to use here. Um, unless, I'm not going to fight with it. Let's just do it. So I'm going to put this in, and I'm going to insert it. There it is. So that came out of my, my Google Drive. Um, let's see. Let me go back in. Let's see. Let's do recent because I think that's where it'll show up. Or I can just use my carrot here and I can jump back over to my drive. And this is... There we go. So I can put in a slides presentation. Okay. So I could load up this page with resources for Planet Unit. Now, let me give you a sense here of what we could do with... Um, our ability to use embeddable code. Now, that's, and frankly, that's how this part of it works. In other words, when you go back here and you look at the YouTube, what they're doing here is this is all embeddable code that they're, that they're using to show you things. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do another tab and I'm going to go to something called FET. P-H-E-T. Now, we're going to go into this in much bigger detail. Um, I think it's, excuse me, I have the right. Well, that's not good. The dot .org. It is not a dot .org. I thought it was a dot .net. Let's try dot .net. And then we come to here. Okay. I'm not going to fight with it. Um, I could go to the site where I have it. And I don't know why it's not working. Because that is its... Oh, you know what it is? P-H-E-T. Let's just do it this way. Colorado. Because that's where it comes from. Let's see if we can head. There we go. Whew. <laughs> so here it is. This is the FET site. And here are the simulations that it offers. So one of the things you can do is if you go into simulations, or you can go over here just to here, and I can do planets. Let's see what kind of simulations it has to offer. Ooh, I can create my own solar system. Kind of cool. I can see what it's like. And I can play in it. And I've already told this thing to allow it. Oh, see the flash is blocked. So I'm going to allow it. There we go. So here we have a solar system creator. Okay. And so kids can kind of get an idea of how things can work. So if I move this 
And if I move velocity, watch what happens. This is how comets work, by the way. Isn't that cool? So as you can see, you can do lots of things. Not only can you do that, you can play with it and say, well, I've got a planet and a moon. Let's see what happens when we do those. And so when you watch this, what you're realizing is, is as the moon is going around the planet, it's actually being tugged by that right there, which is the sun. Kind of cool, huh? So if I change out this, this one, and I change this one, and I change this one. Whoops, let's, let's not change the sun one yet. <laughs> okay, and let's see what happens when you do that. Whoa. My moon just crashed into the sun, by the way. Okay, you can also tell it how many of these you want, so on and so on. Pretty darn cool, huh? So one of the things that I love about the whole um, FET thing is it also offers you the ability, you can actually change or you can actually embed this so it's actually live on your site. And all you have to do is copy the code. I would go back here to my web page and you'll notice that over here under the inserts, I've already got an embed button sitting here. Now, I'm going to put in the embeddable code. Now, let me cover myself here. You saw I had to do that flashy thingy. And so if this, if my sites here, if, if this Chrome doesn't recognize allowing it to use flash, I may be in trouble here. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to do a control V and I'm going to do a next. And as you can see, like I said, it didn't, it didn't show up, which is a shame because they are really, really cool. Let me see. I know I can get it through here. So let's see if we can copy that and go back over here. And let's see if I can put in the address. I just want this and we'll insert that. Bam. Okay. I got it. Okay. So I had to use the, the URL instead of trying to put in the uh, code. Now, when I'm ready, and you must always do this, every time you go back into your sites and change up anything. So if I change the background, if I change a title, if I add more stuff to it, when I'm ready for it to go, I have to hit publish. Okay. And now it's asking me for a website. So I'm going to say planets. Dot swan. Let's see what happens if it'll take that. Sure. I'll put a dash in there. Because I can only use dashes. And it says I'm good to go. See this dart down here? This is how you protect yourself. So if you want this to be found by people going into Google and putting in a search box like Swan Planets, Swan Classroom stuff, they'll find your page. I'm going to tell it, nope, don't want you to. Who can view my site? Anyone? Hmm. And I can either change it to my Google Classroom teachers. I can find anyone can view and change. Let's see what we can do here. Specific people can view when published. So I can make it so that the only people that can see this would be the kids in my classroom. Okay, I'm not going to go through all that because, you know, I have put in people's names, et cetera, et cetera. Now I can put prevent editors from publishing, changing access or adding new people. I can do that. And I'm going to save the changes. And now I'm done. 
And now I've gotten all that. I'm going to say go. Okay. And I can now view my published site. And there's all the cool stuff that I just put into it. And that takes me over here and I can play. Now, let's go back to it. And what we want to do is we want to go back to here. And things that are here start to uh, help us understand what we're doing here. I can share this site with others. So I can click on this thing again. Or I can get the publish site link, which is really what I want to do. By the way, there's a preview here. So, but always remember, always remember, changes you make do not take effect until you publish them. Don't forget that. What I want is the link. I'm going to copy that link. All righty. Let's now go into our classroom. Google.com. And here I am. Now, I'm going to jump back into what we have to do tonight. So what we've done is we've looked at all the parts of the Google Classroom G Suite. We've looked at Calendar. We've looked at Drive. We've looked at YouTube. And now we've looked at Sites. So when we look here at what the assignment is, what it's asking you to do is it wants you to complete, the, it wants you to follow along what I just did. Uh, then I want you to develop an assignment inside a topic, don't lose that idea, inside a topic in your personalized Google Classroom with, number one, a Google Doc explaining the contents and expe expectations. In other words, what's this thing about that we're going to make? Number two, a Google Slides presentation, no more than five slides with material illuminating, illustrating your content focus. Number three, a forms quiz. Doesn't have to be long. Doesn't have to be long. Think of it as the formative assessment, maybe three, four questions at the most. A YouTube video highlighting your content. Well, that's easy. A Google Sites link that showcases material for the content. That's why I did that copy of that link. All righty. Shall we go? So here we are, and I've got all kinds of stuff in here that I've been putting in here because I've been showing you how to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and start blowing some things out. And Get rid of our assignment. Well, it won't let me get rid of the assignment. It will here in my classwork. I forgot where I was. Let's do a quick, um, let's go through and go over how to do everything here, just so we're all on the same page. There, I've wiped everything out. Okay. So the first thing we need to realize is this stream is where things like the new the announcements go. The classwork is where the work goes. That's why they have the create button up there. This is where when you land, you see what someone what someone is doing in this classroom. The classwork is where you actually do the work. One of the things I want you to get into the habit of doing is using announcements. Now this can be as simple as that, or it can be something like reminder <laughs> reminder 
we have a test coming up. Reminder, you have homework that needs to be turned in. Reminder, reminder. This is what you use that for. And you'll notice that it says up here, it says for Google Classroom. Um, as you can see, I have a million of these. So you wouldn't really have to deal with that. And then for all students, if you had a student class, in other words, you had a whole bunch of names in here, you could go through here and pick out different people for different announcements, depending upon how you've got your class organized. Let's go ahead and add something fun here, just so they, you know. So we're going to go back to our planet socks again. I kind of seem to be stuck on that, don't I? And let's let's put a planet song in. Um, I'm going to put in the pink fong because, yeah, I'm a pink fong guy. The reason why I'm a pink fong guy is I got hooked on pink fong by um, my little great nephew that my wife takes care of. And when he comes over, we dance to the baby shark song. Okay. So as you can see, I've put in an announcement. I put in something cute. Um, and I'm getting ready to, I can schedule these. This is the other thing you need to see. So if you're one of these people who are super organized, you could sit here and go, okay, I'm going to schedule this to show up today or tomorrow. February 28th at 8 a.m. when they walk in and sit down and open up their Chromebooks, there it'll be. Sitting there waiting for them. Isn't that cool? So what you're saying then, Steve, is I could go through and make a series of announcements and then schedule them different times and places, or different times and dates. Yep. You will see all that because you've created it. But then when they come in, when the kids come in, they're going to see the announcements when they hit the date that you want them to be there. And, of course, you can go in and change that if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone, and I'm going to say post. And there we go. So the first thing we see is that I've made an announcement so everybody knows what our thing is that we're going to be studying. Notice down here. You can turn on or off the ability for people to comment on your announcement. And you do that, excuse me, you do that up here under the gears. Okay. You could say in here, tell me what you think about the video. Okay, I could go in here. And I can say underneath it, let me know what you think about the video. How about we say the song? Because that's really what we're doing. Give it. Okay. And now when the kids come in, they can turn it on and listen to it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> we go up to the sky. Let's see our solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Jupiter, Saturn. Wow, they're big. Uranus, Neptune. All right. You get the idea. Okay. Now we've set up our unit. And now I'm going to go over to the classwork. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this out because I want to do it all from scratch. So I'm going to delete this topic. Okay, we're all clean. Remember what it says over here in the assignment. You're going to develop an assignment inside a topic. Alrighty. So I'm going to come back to my classroom. I'm going to create a topic. And I'm going to call the topic planets. Call it planets. And I'm going to add it. Ta da! So now I have the ability to have a place to put everything in here. And as you can see, there are no lessons posted yet. That's right, we don't have one. So I'm going to go back here. 
And I'm now going to, let me get rid of this. This was a draft. I don't want to confuse you. Okay, clean. We're all clean now. Now I can go to my assignment. And I am going to, again, put a title here. And we'll call this Planet Assignment. And then down here, I'm going to put in the directions. Read the planet doc. Use the slides presentation. And and take the course. You may use any of the resources available to on our sites. Don't know what that is, but they do know what a website is. There you go. Read the planet doc, use the slides presentation, and take the quiz. You may use any of the resources available to you on our website. Here we go. I'm going to add, and where does a lot of this stuff live? Right over here. Now, if I've already created this, now all I've got to do is just go in and find it and put it in here. If I don't have it, no harm, no foul, I can do an assignment. And then I can go right to our class drive folder, go over here. Let's build us a Google Doc real fast. Yes, I want you to put it in here. Let's learn about planets. Please watch, read, and think about the material. And take our planet is. Simple. So I'm going to put intro to planets. And you know that it's in my Google Classroom. It's in that folder. I'm going to turn off my Grammarly. So we, I've got it. Now if I needed to, I could make a copy. I can do all that kind of stuff. You know how to do this now. So I'm going to share it. And I can share it either with everybody or, I could, again, I could go in here and I can pick and decide who I want. Right now, all I want them to do is be able to edit it, uh, to view it. And I'll say done. Go back to my classroom. I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to create an assignment. Oops, I lost my assignment. It's right here. Go in and look at my assignment, and now I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to add. So from my Google Drive, I can now go and find the stuff that I've just created. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to add that. I'm going to go and add something else, which was the PowerPoint, now the slides document. And I'm going to put that in. And what else do I need to do? Oh, I've got to create a little quiz. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go in the forms. Untitled form. 
and I'm going to call it Planets Quiz. Excuse me. Let's try that again, shall we? Planet Quiz. And then down here, this is where I would start asking the questions. What is the biggest planet? It's going to be a multiple choice. And then I can start filling things in here. Jupiter. Saturn, Mars, and for my grading purposes, I go in, I can move these around, I can do all kinds of things if I want to. Notice that it's required. Oh, and under here, underneath the, the description, I probably should put in here, you know, after you have watched the slides presentation and videos from our website. Take the quiz. Okay. And of course, I would put in questions. I'm not going to send this to anybody. I'm just going to put it in to my wonderful little unit that I'm building here. All right. Thank you. I'm going to jump back into my classroom. And I can either have created that and sent it back, or I can just add it by using a link. I'm jumping around here to show you all the different ways that you can do this. There it is. There's my planets quiz. All right, the last thing we gotta do a YouTube video. Okay, fine, we'll do that. We know how to do that in our sleep, don't we? I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna add a YouTube video. Are we getting tired of the thing? All right, let's get a little more serious here. Let's do planets. And since we are, our quiz was about the sizes, let's go ahead and grab that one. Okay. And then finally, we want to bring in all that well stuff that we created in our Google sites, which looks like I've lost. No, I haven't. It's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. And I'm going to drop back in here to my classroom. I'm going to add a link. And a link. Save. Simple as that. There's our assignment. There's the instructions. And there's all the stuff. Okay. And the cool thing about the classroom now is, is you can now move things around uh, inside of it. So if you, if you want to move this to the top, I can move it to the top.
Okay? Everything is in here now. And what was the last thing I had to do? I have to move this assignment down into my topic. Remember? Let's do that. Boom. Did you see that? <laughs> kind of happened fast, didn't it? That's the, really the beautiful thing now about the classroom is that you can go ahead and create these topics and you can create these separate assignments and then when you're ready all you have to do is grab the assignment and drag it into the place where you want it to go so if i had another place that i wanted to move things to i could do that in other words if i had another topic and i had created stuff i can move things around in and out Got it? I'm waiting for someone to ask the question. Of course, I know you're not there. But here's the question. So, Steve, you're going to take me from here. And one of the things that you've done is you've told me I can go here. How do I get back? Well, you could say that you could say, well, kids know how to get back. They'll come up here and they'll just click on their um, tab. That is our classroom tab and they'll go back to it. Maybe. <laughs> well, how do you keep it from happening? It's not that hard. So if we go back in to, here we are, we're back in our classroom assignment. And as you can see, I've got this here. How do I get back? Well, let's go over, let's close this out because I don't need it anymore. It's already created. And let's go over to our planet site right here. So here I am, I'm, I'm in the ability now to edit things in my planet site. I can put in a link here that says, to take you back to wherever I came from, click here. It's just that simple. And you can do it either one of two ways. You can just put the link in anywhere on the page here, or you can do an insert. I, you know, now buttons are kind of cool too, if you want to use a button. So let's go ahead. This is your site link, but now I need to go back and get my classroom link. So I'm going to go to my classroom. This is the danger of having so many tabs open. Okay. And I have this planet assignment, which has done da, 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 the ability for you to go and get a link to it. Goodbye, Shelly. I can get links to anything and everything. And because I can do that, that means that if I have a link right here, you see where I am? I'm in the stream. I came down here to where my assignment is, and I clicked on the link. Now, if I go back over here to my working page of my planets, which I've got to find again, I can now put this in a text box. things correctly
Now, I might decide where I might want to put this. You know, it might be that I might want to put it somewhere that's a little more obvious. So I might want to drag it somewhere else. Let's see if I can get it up here with the, uh, the little video that we have. There we go. Okay. And now if I do a publish... I now have a link that I've put in to my site. Buttons are kind of cool. Um, let me see if I can show you a button. So if I have a button called Let's Go Home. Okay, not Let's Go Home. Then I can put the link in here, same link I just used. Okay. So if I want to get rid of this, because I think it's kids won't get it, so I can go in here and I can grab a hold of this and I can delete it eventually. There we go. Bam. And then I'll do the same trick I did before. We'll shrink it down a little bit in size, and then let's see if we can bring it up here and position it somewhere right right there. Okay. And now I have an easy way for kids to get back home. That simple. Lands me right back in the assignment. I hope I've gone slow enough for you. Um, you know, if I haven't, you need to let me know. What we've tried to do with this module is, number one, I hope we've demystified Google Classroom a little bit for you. I hope we've helped you see that the beginning and the ending of, I think, in any Google Classroom is Google Drive. This is where we create things. The confusion comes, as you saw, you can create stuff out of an assignment. You can create a doc, you can create a sheet, slides, forms, you can create everything there. The problem with that is it's now locked into that assignment in that Google Classroom. I think all resources, in other words, the stuff you use to teach with, should go into your drive. And then that way, as you pull it in as needed into your Google assignments, it still is in your drive. It's always sitting there waiting for you to use it again if you need to share it with others. We didn't get into the collaboration and the sharing as much as I do when I'm teaching the whole GDC, uh, Google Teacher Certification, because we don't have any names <laughs> to collaborate with. And I think you kind of get the sense of how to do that in the fact that every time we clicked on something, you had the ability to share it um, with another person. And you did that up here with share buttons. The fact that I'm sharing it with everybody it makes it a lot easier to use and the fact that we don't have anybody here so we don't see this in a real classroom you would see a list of names here and you could go through check 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 the ones you want to share it with as i said this is how you do uh differentiation and i think of all the things out of the google it's the one thing that i love about it is this ability to simply um, do different assignments, different structures for kids who may need to have a little bit of help. And you can provide it with them. We went in, we created a topic, we created announcements. 
and then we did an assignment. So here's our announcement. And then we also said, if you wanted to give us feedback, let me know what you think about the song. Kids can put that in right there. And then below that, we posted a new announcement, our new assignment, excuse me, and we put it inside our topic called planets, just by dragging it in there. If you have any questions, if this is got you, you know, befuddled, do not hesitate to reach out to me at 502-457-2937. And let's try to help you with any of your questions. By the way, you don't have to take this exam down here. I'll turn that off. Um, don't hesitate to reach out because I'll be glad to meet up with you and we can talk about it. Next week is a gift. <laughs> it's a gift. Uh, it's very simple. It's, it's what is a digital native? We're going to take a look at some of the ideas around digital natives. Um, do they exist? Is it truly, is it true that kids today are born with technology in their hands? That's why you got the baby playing with the computer. Uh, there's all kinds of thinking all over the place. Uh, Mark Prinsky, who we talked about a little bit when we were looking at our full and stuff, he's made a career. He created the term digital native. He's made a career out of that. Does it really exist? Or is there something else about kids that make them so um, amenable to using technology? And we're going to use a tool called the, Z the Zimmer Twins, which is just fun. And then I'm going to ask you to put your Zimmer Twins things here. Then we'll go and do a jump into things I have hinted at today. Uh, and we're going to start exploring how to make that engaging, that wonderful, engaging content that he takes a great deal of time talking to us about in his book. And we're going to be looking at a whole lot of stuff. And we're going to be looking at engagement and we're going to be looking at assessment. Now, I'm not going to spend as much time as I do uh, on assessment because I think Google Forms is doing a really good job of it. But what I want to show you is some of the incredible, incredible things that are now available out there uh, for us to play with. And even though I've broken them down into these two sections, So we have the Google Forms. We have Nearpod. If you do not know Nearpod, you should know Nearpod. We have Edpuzzle. If you do not know Edpuzzle, you need to know Edpuzzle. We have some really good resources. And I've tried to clean it up so it's not as, because there's so much out there that we could put into this. I've tried to clean it up. I'm, I don't put flip grids in more, anymore into it because the flip grid, I think, is a thing that's kind of that. Uh, the new thing that people learned at conferences and they're still using it and they still don't know why. Although I like Flipgrid, don't get me wrong. Um, I think looking at things like Nearpod and, and looking at Buncee, um, there's and definitely looking at Edpuzzle. Why Edpuzzle? The power of Edpuzzle is you can take a YouTube video and you then can control the content of that video and you can put formative assessments into it. And so you move from just sort of passively watching a YouTube video to suddenly you have the ability to engage kids with it. Good stuff. But that'll come after next week. Next week, as I said, is a gift. In other words, it's easy. You won't have any trouble with it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about digital natives. I'll show you how to um, use Zimmer Twins. We're done. And I'll make sure I turn this off as soon as I get done here tonight with you. You don't have to take the level one exam. As always, any questions, comments, or concerns, 502-457-2937. Thank you.